Welcome back. We're continuing our conversation with Julius Rodriguez, who attends the Master's School in Dobbs Fair, New York. He is a pianist, drummer, and composer. What influenced you to be at the level that you're at right now? Well, first it was practicing and trying to get things down for me and trying to discover as much as I can. And then as I started to make friends who also play music, it would be seeing their accomplishments and seeing where they're going with their music, which inspired me to practice and try to up my level to get where they are at. Who's one of your musical role models? I don't exactly have a musical role model, to be honest. There are people that I listen to that I, you know, musically I'd like to sound s similar like them, but not exactly like them, because I'm trying to find my own voice. But there are people that I en enjoy listening to. Who are those people? Some of them include like Aaron Parks, Lewis Nash, Craig Weinrib, uh, Barry Harris, Kenny Barron. What and who was your first concert that you went to? Well, the first real concert I went to was a Chick Corea concert. And at the time, my dad had gotten a couple free tickets to a Chick Corea concert. I only knew Chick Corea from an album we had, which was like a s piano solo album or duet with Bobby McFerrin. And I wasn't really into the album, so I wasn't sure what to expect when I went to the concert. But it was his fusion band, which I loved. And from then, I went home and did all my research, listened to everything, all the related artists, and that's kind of, it was kind of a big stepping point in my listening career. What was your first concert that you performed at like? My first performance was a while back. It was a classical performance. I must have been, I don't remember, maybe six or seven. And I just remember it was me and another student, and the other student had been really nervous. And I just wasn't nervous at all. I've never gotten nervous at a concert. But I played my piece, and it went well. Do you think there's a reason why you never get nervous? I don't know. It's just kind of a natural thing. It's just people always ask me, are you nervous? But I never get nervous. I feel like performing is just practicing, but people are watching you. It's the only difference. When you ignore the people, it doesn't bother you. How often do you get to play publicly? Maybe a few times a month, a gig or something will pop up. And then I like to go out to what they call jam sessions. Is where you can show up, you can either sign up, or if you know someone, they can call you up. And you get a bunch of musicians up on the stage and they'll play like a jazz standard, like I mentioned earlier. And this happens all throughout New York City at different jazz clubs. How do you get people to see and know about your performances? Well, I share them everywhere. I share them on Facebook and Instagram. I tell all my friends, I tell my friends to tell their friends. Sometimes I try to post flyers at different places, like maybe at my music school or at my school. I try to post flyers. And I know that you play at the Lincoln Center. How does it feel to play there? Well, at first, I'd been there when I was really little. I saw Jonathan Batiste. And I had a faint memory of the place, but I knew it better from pictures. And it's really just a beautiful place. But when I went there, they, it's got a giant window in the background, but they had a giant black screen covering the window. So it's just like you don't get to see it. But I ended up getting used to the theater and the space because I had been there for sound check and being there for a while, you get, just get used to it. And so it wasn't really anything different. It was just performing, but in a new space. So I know you're attending master's school in Dobbs Ferry. What exactly is it? Is it like a regular high school? It is. It's a regular private high school. But the high school is well known for excelling in the arts. They always have the greatest actors, musicians, singers, dancers. They always say it's a three-legged stool, the academics, the sports, and the arts. But the arts always extends past the other two. And how hard was it to get into the Manhattan School of Music? Like, What preparations did you have to make? Well, I auditioned two years in a row, and I got in the second year. It was a little bit difficult because I had to record a pre-screening audition. At that time, I must have been like eight or nine. And just being in the studio was a little bit intimidating. And I'm trying to think. Well, I remember getting the letter back and being really excited to get in. But it was a hard process. You had to prepare tunes, and you don't know who else is auditioning as well, and you don't get to see their auditions. It's blind auditions. Oh. So. Well, 
Are you attending both schools simultaneously? Or? Well, the way the Manhattan School of Music works, it's a Saturday program. So every Saturday I go there. I'm there from 8 to about 6 p.m. And I take classes there. And then I have my regular school where I have my regular English and history and math classes and science classes. Okay. Are there any kids that go to your master's school that go to the Manhattan School of Music too? There are not any kids that go there. Oh, okay. What college would you like to attend and why? Well, the college I've been looking at is the Manhattan School, but I've been there for so long, I feel like I'd be you know, sick of the place, <laughs> being there for seven years and then going for four more years. But it seems like the best fit for me right now. But other schools I would look at are the New School, and Juilliard, NYU, and probably Berkeley, New England Conservatory. Oh, so you want to like stay in the area? I'd like to stay in New York, yes. What do you like to do in your free time besides playing instruments? Besides playing music, listening to music, it's pretty much it. Doing music research, researching about different artists, you know, just trying to learn as much as I can about the music. Because I say, in order to find your own voice, you have to know as much as you can about all the people that came before you. Do you have any siblings? I do. I have a little brother who's two years younger than me. He's 13. Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? 10 years from now, I'll be 25. I would like to be playing regularly in a jazz club, maybe. Maybe recording an album, playing in someone else's band. Wherever I like to, I just like to be playing regularly because that's something I like to do. Would you care if you're like ever really successful or do you just do it because you enjoy it? I do it just because I enjoy it. It would be nice to be super successful, but I'm not really worried about the fame and everything right now. It's not something that I'm looking forward to. For someone who doesn't know how to play the piano but wants to start, what advice would you give them? Find a good piano teacher, I guess, and practice your scales a lot because that's going to help you so much if you just know all your scales. Did you have a piano teacher? Yes, at first when I started, I started group lessons when I was three or four, but when that didn't work, I got a private piano teacher. I would have piano lessons in twos, so I'd have another partner who'd be in my piano lessons. After I graduated from that program, I got a private piano teacher for just me, and he has been just instrumental in my career. He's the one that got me into jazz. He helped me with getting into schools and so. Well. This concludes the interview, but before we go, is there anyone that you'd like to acknowledge that has helped you along the way? Well, I'd like to acknowledge John Senequami, who is the piano teacher I just spoke about, because he has been really instrumental in my career and has provided me with so many opportunities that I just d can't thank him enough for. Well, would you like to perform one last time for us before you go? Yes, I would. Well. We'll be right back. When we come back, Julius is going to perform one more time for us. <laughs>